before we start, I want to ask a question. What is your ideal breakfast? Oh. Give me your ideal breakfast. If I'm not like thinking about my wobbly ass. <laughs> if you're not thinking about anything wobbling at all, which okay. nothing wobbles. Um, ideal breakfast. <sighs> Ooh. Like there's a place called Beam in Crouch End that mm. I go to and it's like everything but it's like it's like a fry up but a posh fry up mm. but then it's got the added bits it's got like halloumi on it which is a bit Delicious. weird but no, it's so beautiful is... I, I think hash brown yeah. the thing is, hash brown is like my favorite potato it has yeah. to be crispy though yeah Obviously, when, it, when it's yeah. like sometimes they're soggy yeah yeah no, you when do you have soggy hash brown i have had them a couple of times yeah a favorite sandwich give it to me like tuna cucumber, it's a bit weird. Oh, that's it's, it's, that's, it's, uh, yeah. Yeah. No, Just, no, nice. No, hey, look, it wouldn't be my death row sandwich. It's not adventurous. <laughs> no, your breath would smell. Yeah. Well, I was going to say that you know the like. cheese and pickle ones in Pret. The but the it's oh they God. call it posh Pret pickle, and I can't bring myself to the posh, to order that. Oh, can I get posh Pret pickle? Yeah, like yeah, and people tell me to piss off. Are you like me? Are you a real foodie? Do you, yes. Yeah, dude. I'm. I, yeah. And but are you, also, are you a real foodie? Yeah, I'm. A, I'm a massive foodie. I don't know if you are. Oh, I think I we have this. I, 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 I would say that that I um, have a pretty good palate. <laughs> you, palate. You don't palate. eat pretty good palate. Oh, I have a pretty good palate. Salad avoid gross one. Um, <laughs> you don't eat proper meals though. He eats like he's like a rabbit. Oh, you like like a little hamster. Yeah. Mm. You'll do like tapas just for any cuisine. Yeah. And no, I snack. That's why I, I snack in between. Yeah. Have a proper meal. I, I just went to I just went to this sort of health farm, which is was pretty interesting. And um, they gave me like broth. No, no, I don't want broth ever. <laughs> I never want broth for breakfast. I don't want broth. I, I don't. I, I'm not even interested in ramen, really. Ramen, no. ramen. You don't so, like ramen. I'm not asked. No, I need it to be like <clears throat> sustenance. Just, yeah, I don't want it to be watery. I don't, I'm not bothered. <laughs> hey, um, I want to say to you, um, I watched your documentary last night. It is fantastic. Oh, thank you. And it's so easy to say that I could say from, it to you. From tuna baguettes to yeah, yeah. dick pics. No, I was it's, quite, yeah, it's quite a change up. I'm, <laughs> yeah, not, ready. Yeah. I'm not ready yet. Because I, I was thinking about, because I was thinking what you get sent for breakfast and I was like, okay, maybe we talk about breakfast because you get sent dicks all the time. Yeah, yeah. Before I have my hash browns, There's I've a seen. That, that sends dick. Like. Quite <laughs> <awesome>. <laughs> no, yeah. No, before it's true. Before I've had my hash browns, I, I see countless penises that I do not want to see. Thanks. And that is a fact. And that's, and it's the, it's a fact for lots of women. But I think, I think what was, what I found this documentary, you can get it on BBC, get it on iPlay. It's amazing. Um, and, and the, the title is interesting because mm. the whole premise of it is that you sort of have the shame because you think that you've brought all of this on yourself. Mm -hmm. And, that for me was baffling me throughout. I don't know. Is it though? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Because I just feel that there's this, there's this connotation with women that since I was so young, I've heard this phrase asking for it, asking for it, like my whole life. And whether you're a girl, you know, at, in a bar wearing a short skirt and you get someone grabbing your ass and you're asking for it. You're going out dressed like that. You're asking for it. You, you know, it's, it's just this phrase I've heard my whole life and it goes in eventually. And you, mm. you end up going, maybe I shouldn't have done this. Shouldn't have done that. Do you know, recently I, this guy, this man followed me home and he was saying all these horrific things to me. And so wait, wait, he, a guy followed you home. Oh yeah. It happens all the time. No, you see, you see, this is the, you can't just brush these things off. It's, it's, this is the world that we're living in as women. Mm -hmm. We have keys in our hand. We're, you know, we've got, we record, we put our phones on record sometimes so we can record what's going on. This is what happens. And I recorded this man saying awful things to me. And I, I remember I played back the recording uh, to a friend and the record, she heard me say in the recording, in the, in the, in the recording, he says to me, you got a boyfriend then? And I and I, I said, no, I haven't got a boyfriend. She went, why did you say that? Say you've got a boyfriend. Why didn't you say this? Why didn't you do that? Mm. And it was all a list of things of what I should have done in that situation. He shouldn't have been harassing me. Mm. And this is the issue. This is, we're constantly being told to not wear short, don't wear a short skirt then. Don't walk home on your own then. Don't um, don't engage in conversation with someone that's trying to talk to you. Why, why is it us that has to, we're, we're having to make all these changes. And really the fault lies with the person who, is is following you home or pinching your ass or you know yeah, totally they don't take any there's no accountability apart from on us i it's, think it's a really complex situation isn't it yeah like 
it depends like how you kind of break it down layer upon layer because obviously mm. you've got the immediate kind of wrongdoing there's this guy who's being a fucking freak following you home mm. and then it's like you have to ask the question like why is he doing that like yeah. why why is his life mm. led him to a place mm. that he thinks first of all that's okay that he's got the desire to do it mm. and and i guess it's like I think like society is like ultra sexualized, isn't it? Completely. Like on both sides. Yeah. I mean, obviously, because it's been a patriarchal society, it's like been heavily sexualized for women. Mm -hmm. And I feel like. It's a societal norm now. This is societal norm that we all well, have become used to. Sex has become like commoditized. So you're kind of like, you're toying with a very like deep innate human desire. Right? And you're kind of like dangling it um, to people who won't necessarily be able to like, first of all, kind of achieve that vision of sex. Mm -hmm. So I think what it does is it ends up like fucking people's heads up. Because mm -hmm. I, I don't I don't think that like humans are all born kind of like innately bad. I think everyone's actually kind of good. It's like their life that molds them to be like that. So I, I wonder whether like Yeah, but that but that's I, I know where you're going with it, but still, I mean it, it feels like I, I think I think you could probably plot a course as societies become more ultra sexualized and commodity sex and normalized, normalized all this stuff. Uh, there will be this rise in people thinking it's okay to act like that. And also they'll have the desire to do it because they're being sold this idea that that yeah. is what goes on. And they know they'll get away with it. And this is the thing. And, and look how far it can go when we turn a blind eye to all the all the behaviour that's now been normalised. Like there are police officers that are abusing their position of power even now, you know. Mm. And I think it. this is why, and men get very frustrated, not, not all men, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Men, some much. men get frustrated when we start talking about these little minor behaviors like catcalling or, um, you know, uh, what, what's wrong if I want to send a picture of my dick to someone? It's like these are behaviors, the, the behavior that has turned aggressively terrible, that started somewhere. You know, we, the awful, the awful stuff we're hearing in the news, Wayne Cousins, David Carrick, these men started somewhere they started as flashers we know Wayne Cousins he was a flasher right mm. so it's getting to the the root of these societal norm behaviors that we've just completely normalized and internalized as normal um that yeah, men just think that they they are allowed to behave this way they know they're going to get away with it and they see how far they can push it and look what happens when we don't do anything about that yeah. so it's kind of like some men think that we're just trying to spoil their fun by going no you can't you can't whistle at us in the street. You can't do that. It's inappropriate. If you if you are already doing that, or you're already flashing someone, you're dangerous. I think you are dangerous because that look how that behaviour escalates and mm. evolves. It's that, and so it's getting to the root of it. And, yeah. And Emma, I suppose with you as well. That I mean, because you were kind of because and I God, I just want to try to get, but you were kind of sort of a sort of sex symbol from such a young age because of the in-betweeners, because yeah. of FHM, because of these magazines, men feel that they have a right. Yes. That's what it must be, right? That they, This that, is the confusion. They don't, they don't this, see this you is, as a... Because it's see become you as a, commoditized. Mm. That becomes a commodity that you therefore can own almost. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I think that's why men kind of get this idea mm. that because you've put it on a pedestal or whatever, that they, yeah. they're, you know, it's their right to act as... But this is the... Do they, they see you as a person? Is I that, is uh, well, I, th I think b b being in the industry that we're in, Anyway, people don't really see us as normal people, do yeah. they? they? So that, I mean, we all get trolled. We all get horrible things said to us. And I do sometimes think there's a degree of separation where they don't understand that we are human beings as well. That's one thing. But I think where the confusion comes in when it comes to women who have been celebrated in a sexual kind of way from a young age, the confusion is because I come out and say that I... I enjoyed doing all of that. I enjoyed doing the lads mags. Mm. I enjoyed seeing the photographs of me afterwards looking fit and slim. I want to be sexy. I want to be sexy. Yeah. I felt sexy. I felt yeah. good. I was like celebrating my youth and my body. And, you know, I was in, I was in an amazing sitcom and I loved the character that I was playing. And like the, the confusion comes in here because I'm saying I enjoyed doing all those things. I don't enjoy the the sexual violent side of it. It's, it's, it's people that can't control themselves. You know, there should be, if you take the sexual violence and the misogyny out of it, out of the equation, there's just a young woman there work. I'm working, I'm doing my job. Um, I'm celebrating my youth and my body the way I want to. This is my choice. Um, 
you know, I, it's, it's my job. You know, mm. I, I had an amazing acting gig that I was really proud of. And I was sure. And back then and it was a bit different right? opportunity. Yeah. And it was a bit different back then. You did do lads mags to promote your work. I was fine with that. I never got forced into doing that. But so where does that leave me? If I'm saying I liked doing that, I'd pose in my pants again. If, you know, I toned up yeah, a little but, bit. But also, probably, yeah, yeah, exactly. But <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I, what I say here is like, it's almost like you're trying to defend yourself there. There's no need. Like for, for me, it, okay, whatever, whatever you want to do in life, whether it's, I don't know, freaking guys doing whatever, girls doing whatever, it's fine. Choose what you want to do. It doesn't still give a right for people to see you as a sort of object and no. then objectify you and yeah. just, and say offensive, and, usually offensive. And also it's such a cop out because people sort of say, do you think it was the role though that you played in the in-between? No, if I was a fucking Disney girl, I'd, I'd be getting it. Do you remember when Vanessa Hudgens when she was in, yeah. you know, uh, what was it? High School Musical, the, you know, the, the, the most kind of childlike show mm. in the world. And even that was highly sexualized because men can't control their urges and desires. She had news leaked of her and mm. it was already terrible. She was, a, you know, she was a Disney girl. It, and so it doesn't matter whether you're, you know, playing a sexy schoolgirl that all the boys fancy or a, you know, a, a child friendly Disney type character. It happens anyway. So mm. I don't blame, I don't, I now have taken the blame off, you know, certain roles that I've taken on and um, lads mags and things. It happens no matter what, whether you're a sex worker or a fucking nun, yeah. it happens. Yeah, I, I you understand know. why your mind went there. Like, you know, it's the same with, with social media and us, like social media is a problem and mm. we have done stuff on social media and like, you know, portrayed you a, a life while I got my bum out that once, but that, <laughs> that wasn't well received, actually. We've uh, all been there. Yeah. Uh, it was bleached, actually. Was it? Yeah, it was, it was perfectly the... Did you show your... Yeah. Yeah, that... Whoosh. Did you? Um, but you showed your bum hole. No. Oh. Why is it different showing the, the bum holes? <laughs> someone told, just a tangent. Someone told me a story once. <laughs> where they? Someone told me a story where they went to a wedding and they were doing a photo booth, and it was like them smile, smile, smile. And they turned around and pulled out their pads. Some some girl I know, and she, and she was wearing like a thong. She's like, wow. And she saw the pictures back, and she had pulled her bum. No, <laughs> it's just a picture of her bum hole. No, no. <laughs> that for some reason is so, bum holes are funny, so funny, <laughs> and so aggressive. <laughs> I imagine yours is just bleached anyway. Yeah, you're yeah, yeah. Bleached, uh, <laughs> it's, it's probably bleached. looking quite brown at the moment. That's <laughs> <pretty tan>. <laughs> <laughs> Very mahogany butthole. It probably <laughs> smells quite sort of biscuity as well. <laughs> mahogany butthole. A mahogany butthole. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Jamie Lang has a mahogany butthole. Yeah, mahogany butthole. <laughs> Millie, what were you saying though? You were saying like you're just... no, so now just kind of sort of <laughs> wooden, but, wooden ass. Uh, no, you know, what I was saying was like you you feel because right. So you identify the issue, and there is this bigger societal issue that Instagram whatever causes, mm. and because we feel like we've played a part in that, you go, oh well. Shit, maybe that's yeah, like complicit. Some of my fault. Which mm. in a way, you know, individuals are kind of everyone's an individual and they all make up part of the big picture. So I mm. guess there is kind of some of that. But then you're not the one that's like leading the charge and like creating this whole kind of Yeah. It's it's so it's so it's really complex. It's so I complex. St I still don't get I still don't think they're it, that's like sort of saying, um not your saying, but that's like I know where you're going with some people saying, okay, I walked through a park in the middle of the night and I got attacked. Well, mm. shouldn't walk through the park then. It's like it's immediately victim blaming, yeah, victim blaming, victim blaming. Yeah, the, I don't know why. It's weird. Why as human beings, like that's our natural go to, isn't it? Like it's it's like a default mode. We we just immediately blame blame the victim. Why is it? Because it's easier to do that. I think I it's easier to do that. It's, it's like when you see a child crying on a flight, you think, oh, parents are awful. That yeah, child, yeah. you have no idea what's going on with that child. That child mm. could be uh, sick. It could mm. be anything. It could mm. be whatever it is. So we just always because it's easier to do it that way. So you came in here and. And I, you know, and we kind of made a a, a joke about it because I on, on the in the documentary there's this amazing moment you're with your friend Sean and you tell him some of the DMs that you mm. received and at the first like you say you've received 37 direct messages before you've had your eggs yeah of just my scrambled eggs just, just, just <laughs> so, I do you do you I do, do. Nice bit I do. Of dick and eggs yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. just so many and then you tell Sean and he laughs yeah because it's, like like it, most it's awkward almost ninety percent of people that is how they react and you know it's also it's it's how my friends think I want them to react and as well I don't mind if I'm in a in an environment where I feel safe and with people that love and care about me 
Um, and also sometimes I want someone to laugh about it with me. Otherwise yeah. it makes me feel really uncomfortable mm. and isolated. We laugh, but we, you know, especially, you know this, if you work in comedy, we laugh in the face of adversity. That's what we do, you know, and to laugh at things like that, which I have done, that, that is, it's a coping mechanism. And it's a coping mechanism for people that hear it too, because, you know, Sean and Steve, the, the guys that were in that scene, they, they adore me and they want me to be safe and protected. Mm. There's no, you know, like, and obviously, no, mal no, no maliciousness in it whatsoever. Yeah. Not, no. But there was a shock in there where suddenly they went, yes. oh shit, because you, you, you sort of, it was ha ha ha, jokey, jokey, jokey. And then it turned and you said, well, I get this thing about telescope and yeah yeah when when they sort of know my safety's compromised you know mm. i think i think there's this thing of people find it funny when they just you can laugh at it if it's not affecting your safety and and then mm. but when people know it's affecting your safety they get a bit more serious about it but what i'm trying to sort of teach people is that the it's not just about the safety it's that it's it's your mental health that that it wreak have wreaks havoc yeah, with you know it's like of course you know i don't think these men are going to turn up at my door. There have been times where I think, oh, fucking hell, is there someone outside or, mm. you know, and there have been sometimes. Um, I've moved out of two houses because of men trying to barricade their way into my house. So what? so when my safety is compromised, it's a different thing, but it's like, it, it's also, I get the same gut churning feeling when I get these messages, even if I know they're not going to turn up at my door. So it's not just about um, the physical safety, it's the mental health impact mm. that it has. You know? You you said you, one of the messages you received today, and you don't have to say it, but the message you came and you said, this is what I've got this morning. And it said someone had written you saying, I want to break a glass bottle in your... And shove it up your cunt. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. No, it's fine. That is hellishly aggressive. Yeah, but the, the fear that happened and um, is that the, the fear that sort of happens with you is that then how do you start... How, you must see men slightly... Um, you must just not trust men and and look at men in a certain way. And that must be hard for relationships and all these yes. things. Yes. And the, well, and this is the other thing when I'm talking about the mental health aspect of it. It's like I have to sort of look at patterns of behavior that I have with men. I have quite a complex relationship uh, with men. I've had good relationships. I've had bad relationships. But I know I do notice certain patterns that I've had, especially in the last few years, of my own behaviors. And it's all because of I'm frightened. I'm I'm terrified of men. And I, it's something I've really had to look at. And obviously going through the documentary, that's, that was one of the hardest things. And also talking about your personal life like that and your personal relationships. I'm single. So, and I want to eventually find someone and be with someone and putting all this out there. Again, I, I'm worried about how that's going to be and how men are then going to perceive me and, and kind of go, oh, fucking hell, is she, you know, too damaged? Is, you know, I have to think about that as well. It's a lot. Yeah, no it's a lot ways. to think about. Yeah, it's a lot. Oh my God. But, but it's that is, horrible. But that is something that you shouldn't be even considering. Oh God, it's, I do. And, and, you know, when I was watching the documentary, a, a, a million things were going through my mind. And what one was of going through your mind, like, cause, cause, cause you, 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 I, I you, you, it's a lot, right? Mm. And it feels like it's, it's a lot for you to handle, which mm. I totally, it, it, it's heavy, that stuff. It's really heavy, but I sort of think someone has to do it. And, and, you know, it can't all just be, glamorous TV shows all the time and podcasts with sexy boys, you know. Did a really good one the other day. So, um, Don't worry, guys. Don't worry about it. but like, yeah, it can't, you know, it can't just all be that. And I just feel like it's, it's a subject that I know so much about and I can talk about it very authentically. And weirdly, I actually, I talk about it quite comfortably because, because it's intrinsically, built in me. I know about it so much and I kind of don't mind sharing it anymore. Um, but there is this thing in me going, oh Jesus, like, am I just sort of creating now a whole other like list of problems when it comes to my dating life now, you know, but no way. I can't. Are you joking? You've got to be open and talk about it. Yeah, things. boys are fucking assholes though. Boys are They're fucking assholes. They are mahogany, bleached buttholes. Yeah, it's, it's true. And I only, I think guys, guys mature as well, like way later. Like, yeah. I, you know, whatever, 34 now and I'm still not the mature. But I think, but I remember when I was like 28, I just mm. no freaking clue what was going on. And, and, 
At 28, you had no clue what was I going on. I think so. I think I was a loser at 28. Fuck I was me. an idiot. Do you know what this... You this, didn't this, act like you thought you were a loser. This annoys <laughs> no. me. Do you know what annoys me so much, right? If I'm dating someone yeah. that's like in their 20s, <laughs> yeah. I I get people saying to me, like, and you know, if he's pissing me around and it's just... So, people go, well, what do you expect? He's... He's 26 or he's 28. Like he doesn't, I'm like, he's a fucking grown man. He's a man. Like he's a man. How, how is that an excuse? When women are 26, 28, we've, we've got our shit together or we're, you know, we're kind of meant to have, you don't get, Actually, you don't so get true. men. You don't get like a, a 40 year old man going out with a 28 year old and the, and everyone's saying, saying to the guy, yeah, she's just going to fuck you about mate. She's 28. She's a kid. <laughs> no, but well, apparently when you're a guy and you're 28, you're still yeah. a fucking kid. Grow up, man. It's so true. Grow it, up. It's so true. When, when guys fuck around when they're young, it's like, ah, oh, he's only 28, yeah. man. And when, and when you see men going out with younger women, it's like, well, she's psycho. Yeah. It's like, it's, yeah, it's that whole it's culture of like, all oh, the rascals, those boys, what are they yeah. like? Boys will be boys. I mean, boys we had will that be boys. In, in Made in Chelsea, didn't we? It was like, yeah, I think we did. encouraged to be like, just be a naughty boy, right? Yeah. It wasn't and encouraged, it, no, well, right? It, well, it was in a way, because yeah. if you were, you were, it was almost like rewarded. And, and there is something about it, and I don't speak on behalf of all women, but it's, and maybe this is animalistic, you know, women kind, they don't love it, they hate it, but they can't get enough of it sometimes. Mm, it's and men that know way. that. It's drug-like. It's, yeah, it is drug-like. It's, it's addictive. And it's, yeah. it's, uh, it's like the dopamine hits and, we also, and also, and again, I'm speaking very personally here. I'm you. I'm so used to being treated so badly. So when a guy is treating me badly, giving me the runaround, that's comfortable for me. That's familiar. You, I don't you've become addicted to you. You know that feeling. I know that feeling, and you it's don't know how to exist. With that it's a familiar. It's it's familiar, and it's comfortable. And so, and I'm learning all about this in therapy. Kind of comfortable behavior patterns, and it's not comfortable in the world we know. It. It's not like cozy, comfy, mm. sat on the sofa, sofa, comfy. It's like a mental thing that I've been through in the past that I now kind of, if I spot it in my life, I, I sort of, I latch onto that. So if a guy's being good to me, I don't really know how to, to process that. Talk to me mm. about therapy. I, I've done, I do therapy as well. It's just the most magical thing. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, it's, I, it's, it's amazing. It's everyone should be in therapy. Yeah. I don't understand people that go, Oh no, no. <laughs> Why? Yeah, why wouldn't you? Have you done it for a while? Have you started? Oh, this? years. And years and years. Yeah, years and years. So what are you? Before, before it was trendy. <laughs> yeah, I was before it was trendy. <laughs> yeah. I was at the point where people were like, what do you got? I feel yeah, like yeah. nervous all the time. They're like, what the hell's wrong with you? Yeah, I'm yeah. Like, then they go, well, you got anxiety. Mm. And I was like, what the hell? Yeah. What are, you, what are your... Um, What's your resume in there? What did, you know? Have you? Is it a bit? Do they kind of? Yeah, it's a bit of anxiety. How here. mental are you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What's your resume? Well, I've been through therapists like boyfriends, so it's a yeah. long old list. Um, I'm the same though because it's constantly changing. Yeah, the, yeah. It's the change because you think if you go to the next person, it's going to fix. Gonna yes, fix, gonna yeah. Fix. And and but this is what I'm learning in therapy. There's no fix. It's not like there's this end goal that you're trying to get. It's you know, it's not like the gym and you're trying to get a six pack. It's like you, it's something you have to work on for the rest of your life, mm -hmm. I think. And it's, it's not about like finding the end goal. It's about taking all the things that you are, understanding those behaviors, understanding why, it, you know, going back to childhood traumas and memories and then piecing them together with why you behave in certain ways now, whether it's in relationships or friendships or, you know, it's, it's building an understanding of all your little kind of coves and all your little wires in your body and, you know, matching them up with certain things. And, but, that will always be a work in progress. You're never gonna. It's it's you, you're never gonna be cured. You can't reach perfection. No, it's like a constant evolution. It's like yeah, you just absorb that knowledge to then give you the best kind of experience. Completely, possible. yes. You, very wise. Or at least try. Yeah, very, very wise. wise. Very, you've taken a wise Thank pill you. today. Yeah, Alex. well done. Yeah, well really done. wise. That was, yeah, that would have been uh, <laughs> sniffing drugs again. Uh, <laughs> really worked. <Yes. laughs> there was a um, there was there's two things in the documentary which um, were 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 pretty moving. I think the the one the first one is when you were in a therapy session within the documentary and you spoke about oh, the fact that, that was rough. Yeah, it, it felt pretty rough. And you you there was this really uh, almost like you wanted to give a virtual hug to you because you said, "Why do I just want to snog boys <laughs> and just be like?" But everyone wants that. Yeah. But you saw that as a curse. Yeah. To you, but why do you feel that's a curse? I feel like if you're somebody who celebrates your sex life and talks about it and like, you know, like I do in my shows and I sort of, um, you know, I, I've enjoyed a very fun life of dating and, and all of mm. that. And I think that it's, it's a shame that we can't just enjoy and celebrate all that 
the, without the devastating consequences as women, men are allowed to do that. Mm. And they'll be able to do that till the end of time. And it's celebrated and, you know, they're bachelors and it's all amazing and it's and it's sexy and oh, it's naughty. Look at Pete Davidson, for fuck's sake. He dates every beautiful woman mm. in Hollywood and he's a fucking legend. I date the fit lads over here and I'm tragic, <laughs> you know, and it's like, oh, she's desperate. She can't hold a man down for more than three months. <laughs> so unfair. It's, like, it's so unfair and it's... Like, I want to enjoy dating. I want to enjoy my sex life. I want to do all these things. And I'm comfortable talking about those things, but I'm being bashed over the head with this societal fucking hammer going, you can't do that. If, if you, okay, but if you want to do that, you have to take the terrible consequences that come with it. And you have to just accept that that's the way it is. And I'm just like, oh, that's really mm -hmm. frustrating to me because I'm just trying to be myself, I'm trying to be me. And I, I feel like society is telling me that, I'm the problem. I'm a problem. I think I just realised why it all boils down to male insecurity. The whole thing, really. Yeah. It, yes. Well, it it's, must all, be, it's, right? it's all about yes. control, isn't it? And yeah. that's why this whole sort yes, of structure control. has been set up to shame women and make men yeah. feel great for because it means that we can go and do what we want and we mm -hmm. can make women feel like shit and like yeah. keep them in order almost. Yeah, and that that's that's, that's intrinsically built in men and women, and we just sort of accept that's how it is and. I've been in relationships where the balance is very much like that, but I, I pander to it and I don't know what else to do, you know? And I kind of, I saw, and, and also I've sort of told myself in the past that if a man is kind of being that way with me, it's cause he, cause he cares and he's obsessed with me and oh, that's nice having a man obsessed with you, you know, but it's just, it's control, it's control. Mm. What do you like when you're in love? Oh, uh, do you like being in love? I'm, I'm. I am a ball of love. Yeah. I, I was, do you know what? I was, I was saying this the other day. There's some types of people who are, are consumers of love and they experience all different types of love. Mm. I've experienced so many different kinds and I'm able to, it's broken me to bits, but it's also kind of shaped me who I am as well. And I wouldn't change it. And I'm constantly getting told off for falling in love too quickly or, um, you know, uh, you know, putting my, wearing my heart on my sleeve mm. and this and that. I'm never going to not do that. No, I'm never going to change that. Yeah, 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 I'm a not. consumer. I, I, I want to wear it all and experience it all. And there are some people who, you know, they're not like that and they, they know how to love in one way and they- How do people be aloof? They get, yeah. How do you be aloof? Yeah. <laughs> and they, they get married at 18 and they're with that person for the rest of their lives. Good for you. Great. But I, I love, I love relationships. I love friendships. I love sex. I love connections, mm -hmm. you know, and there are people that I've dated and who I've had things with that I'm still really good friends with. And, you know, I've got people in my life I go for dinner with and have fun with and, you know, and there's, there's love, there's still a lot of love there. And that's, that's the beauty of life to me. And I've eventually, hopefully I'll meet someone and settle down and do all of that. But like, I'm a, I'm a consumer of love. It's a, even when you said that just then, you, when you, you'd love and, things, and then you went sex, even when you said you went, yeah, you, it, yeah. The, the, you feel there's like a bit of almost mm. like, like embarrassment there. Yeah. It's, it's sweet to love sex. Yeah. Like, I do. I do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, say it. <laughs> Fucking love sex. We all love sex. Yeah. Freaking well, because, great. And do you know what? I think because there have been times where I've hated sex, like, and I spoke about this in my, you know, in the documentary on a, on a darker note, there have been times where I've been put mm -hmm. in positions I, I didn't want to be in when it came to sex. So I've had to really kind of build my relationship back with sex as an adult and understand that it's a, a really great thing when it's consent and when it, it consented and it's, it's good and it's warm and it's not too pissed. You mentioned the documentary. We've had those times where we've woken up and we don't really know what's going on and you're with someone or whatever. And you mm. said this sort of moment where you've woken up and you've been like, what the hell's happening mm. here? Yeah. And you can't remember it. Mm -hmm. And I think it felt like for you that you've almost again felt this, this shame because you were like, what is going on? Yeah. Most girls I know have had at yeah. least one experience of that at least. Oh um, my God. yeah. And it's, and I, I also, you know, there's obviously a lot of boys or men out there who have done that to a girl know, knowing they've done it. But they've just gone on and lived their lives and just kind of going, yeah, but I didn't really do anything wrong. It's like, this is where education has to come in way more about consent. And, you know, yeah, it's, uh, if, a, if a girl is pissed, don't have sex with her. Like, no, unless, no. <laughs> Do you no. know what I mean? It's like, yeah, I don't know. No, I, I'm totally with it's you. It's a hard one, that. It's, yeah. It is it's such a strange <laughs> yeah. thing that men go from that way of thinking. They're like, right, okay, this is okay. Yeah. That's what I don't understand is like how that has become, you know, has that always been instinctively a thing? Have men, have we always been like these fucked up primal 
Yeah, I think it's things. I, I feel like it's been exacerbated and made a hell of a lot worse with kind of. Yeah, I think I think so. And tell me, tell me about your childhood as well, because you grew up in a house where everyone was just famous. Yeah, <laughs> you're like, like what a, am I? A thingy baby? Famous. What they call it? Uh, ne- ne- I'm you're a nepo baby. You're a nepo baby. I'm a nepo baby. Nepo I'm gonna get a t-shirt. Yeah, it's a nepo baby is like. Well, it's it's the opposite of that. Nepo baby is basically people who just are famous for being uh, <laughs> their parents are famous, okay. yeah. so they don't really do anything. But that's the complete opposite of you. What, what, what were your parents famous for? Well, my mum was uh, a singer. First of all, she had a number two hit in the chart. She wrote "Surprise, Surprise." You know that mm-hmm. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> she did that. She wrote that, and she wrote another one. And yeah, she, so she was in the charts. Uh, in the 80s. And then my dad was also in the charts. Um, Keith. And, yeah, Keith. And he was Bonnie Tyler's guitarist for 30 years. Amazing. Oh, wow. And yeah, my mum went on to, you know, she was an actress, comedian. She, she's doing so Superstar. well at the moment. I mean, is there, like, she's in Afterlife. Like, she's in series three of Afterlife. Iconic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah she's a wow. she's a ledge. Kate is a fucking ledge. But it was a very chaotic household. I mean, you can imagine, you know, two creative parents. Yeah. It was a fucking mess, but it was full of love. Like we, Quite fun though. You know, yeah, the, the school uniforms were never iron and we missed the bus every day but it was it was very full of love we were smothered in love that that is because when you're in a household like that and you see parents who are known and they're on tv and when i was a kid all i wanted to do was be on tv yeah the only like i just wanted (laughs) like i couldn't believe you'll get there i know i can't wait you will get there i remember i went i went to have your moment i went to a restaurant and piers brosnan was sitting next to me and i was like Oh my <laughs> God! Her move over, <laughs> yeah, yeah. New bond in town. yeah, but like I just found it amazing, and that very much led me to thinking. I related to something you said, which is I thought, okay, if I make it onto TV, everyone's going to love me, and it's all going to be okay. Yeah, that's what's going to happen. And my family, I, I came from a lot of love as well, and. Th- people in therapy would say that you go back to your childhood and what happened here for you to want that validation and. You came from a family of love. I came from a family of love. So why do we think we have that inner child screaming for validation? Mm, It's a good question. Why do we have that? That is a good question. But may I think as well, as much as it was full of love, it was also uh, very, you know, my parents were away a lot and Mm. um, we had nannies and things like that. And so there was an element of like, uh, obviously I was never abandoned like ever, but I do have abandonment complexities because they, you know, they were away a lot and, I was always trying to get my parents' attention. The second mm. that they were around, I was like, right, what can I do? I'm, I would either kick off and do something really naughty or I'd start performing or whatever. So yeah, I think a lot of it, I mean, if we're going really deep, a lot yeah, of it is, on, it's, it's like, it's validation that you're seeking from parents yeah, at, at a time. Yeah, I think it is. And I, cause I remember missing them and I remember thinking like, what can I do just to kind of get their attention? So, but then also that mixed in with the fact that I, I watched my mum performing my whole life. And you know, when you're little, you just want to be like your mummy, mm-hmm. you know? And I, I would watch, I'd watch her on stage and I'd watch people admiring her afterwards. I remember, I remember we went to a Bonnie Tyler gig and uh, I think I must've been about eight or nine or something. And um, we, it was back in the day where you could be taken out of school and you, you wouldn't get fined. Mum and dad would just t- take us out of school sometimes. <laughs> yeah. And we we're on tour with dad and Bonnie Tyler. And um, they, we all went to the bar afterwards and mum and Bonnie were really close and they were, having a fag and a drink at the bar and everyone was staring at them and asking for pictures and, you know, asking for autographs and things. And I remember saying to mum, like I pulled on a thing. I went, mummy, why is everyone staring at you? And she went, because we're famous, darling. (laughs) I remember it. I remember it. She went, 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 yeah, she went, because we're famous, darling. And I remember going, click, click. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I remember thinking, oh, okay. Famous. And that looks fun. It's like this Jenga piece. Mm. Okay. That looks fun. That's what I want. Okay. Click into place. And uh, someone, actually really Michael Whitehall uh, of all people said to me that it's called the bug. Once you get the bug of you want to have that sort of, you want to be entertaining and be on stage and be in films and be in TV and all these different things. It's very hard to shake it. Mm. You can't really shake it. And and, and there's something, again, drug-like. Mm. Like it. When was the first moment you realised that you were funny and that if you made people laugh? It was at school. I started doing impressions of the teachers. Mm. That was like the thing. Or like I would do impressions of like our mates' mums that were telling us off all the time. And I started doing that. And I, I was I was naughty. So yeah. but I was that like... That combo is a, a yeah, dream. I, I, was, I was the chatterbox, you know, n- n- never did anything mean or anything like that. But I was just very naughty and I'd be sent out of mm-hmm. the class and I'd be 
put in isolation. I'd be throwing things from isolation at the, you know, the, I, I was show, I was a show off, complete show off. Um, I fancied all the boys, always hanging around with the boys. You behaved quite well when no one was looking. Oh yeah, looking, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I, I, but I also I liked attention. I loved yeah. attention, and I remember when when I was at nursery. And this is, I swear, this is the God's honest truth. I remember it. Um, they, <laughs> my parents had to go in to kind of have a debrief of how I was getting on at nursery. And they said- uh, You're like five, four. Yeah, years. yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I was like, come on guys, what are you up to? Um, Serious debrief. Yeah, yeah. Age four. Right? <laughs> like on my, on my progress, yeah. And I was thinking, I've, I painted some ducks today. What fucking more do you want? <laughs> but, um, and they said to my mum and dad, they said, uh, they went, she, at break time, the only thing we're concerned about is that she doesn't play with any of the, any of the toys. She just plays kiss chase with all the boys. But the game just was like, no other girls were allowed to play. I was like, right, all the boys, I'm going to go to the other end of the playground. I'm going to run around and all the boys, all you boys have to chase me and kiss me. And I'll be like, oh, you got me. Oh no. <laughs> I, knew, I used to kiss Loved chase. It. Yeah, kiss chase was a big yeah. thing. We, we used to, I remember me and a couple of the fellas, a couple of the girls, we, we were four, whatever it was. <laughs> We used to like go in like break wars. time. We would run into like the bathroom and show each other like our penises yeah. and vaginas. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what we would do. Totally. Rock on. But look at the innocence of it. Yeah, it starts. It starts so innocent. And I remember, mm. I remember the interest that I had in boys. That it, it was, it was so innocent. I, I would, I would cry about Aladdin, you know, and be like, oh, I just want to marry Aladdin. It, <laughs> it's innocent in the yeah, beginning. It's, totally it's, it's when you grow boobs and you start your period and you and you get a bit taller that <laughs> men start to spoil that innocence, and that's yeah. where it goes wrong. You know? Yeah, I, I think it does. And I think it's, um, and then emotions start to go into, that's why there's, yeah. I, I've said this before, but there's this poem, two poems, which is innocence and experience and how experience ruins innocence yeah. and how we should want to stay innocent forever. Cause that's kind of a wonderful thing to be. That's interesting. Experience ruins it innocence. It does, yeah. totally. Like yeah, if, yeah, yeah, if yeah. no one told us what anxiety was, we wouldn't mm. question all these different things. There's an amazing moment again in the documentary, if I haven't banged off on about it enough, is when you have a conversation with your mum and your mum finds it really tough. Tough. Oh, that was, and you awful. find it tough, and and, yeah. you, and that was uh, chopped down a lot as well. Like that was so fucking hard to film. I am um, because I remember I was like all, like doing that. Like, I was grabbing my top. I was like, oh god, because I could see you're becoming upset because it's so it's so awkward, mm. and so you just oh, I just and then it's crying. my fault, and then I feel like yeah. I, I've upset my mum, and then your mum is. Your mum is tough, of, and I think it feels like your mum is is it, it can be tough, and she just doesn't. She hates to see it. Yeah. Doesn't want to see it. Doesn't want to see it. Doesn't want to see it. to her, like, what's been happening in terms of the messages. Yeah, I showed, I showed her the messages and she's just, ugh, even just thinking about it, like, I feel like, though, I feel like yeah. she's angry with me. And it's like, I know she's not, but like, I feel like, I feel like she is. And it's just this blame, blame, blame thing that I feel that it's, 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 it's why I never sort of told anyone in the past or when I was younger about sort of things that I was uncomfortable with because I just felt like it was my fault. I... It happens all the time. It happens way more than people realise, and people mm. just aren't talking about it. It's true. I, I, I remember I speak. To, I spoke to my mum about it, and just to, she told me so many, so many experiences. And her whole thing was, "We just get on with it. You get on with it." Yeah. And I'm like, what? Like that just. Thank God that just doesn't happen now. And and thank God, it, honestly, it's not just. It, I could easily sit here and go, "Thank God for your voice." But it's so true. You, it, you, what is sexy is you being confident enough. To stand up and go, here we go. I'm going to talk about this shit now because it's it's pretty hard. Like you said, you're worried about what other people think of you. Worried about guys because we're all insecure in those ways. But actually, that is sexy. Thanks. It is. It is sexy. It's a it's See, being I, a boss yeah, and I owning want, that. I want to be sexy. This is the thing. It's not like and like I still want to play sexy roles. Yeah. I, I want to be sexy. I want to talk about the same things I've always talked about and laughed about on stage. We've sat here and talked about mahogany bum holes. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like and we laugh about those things. I will always, I'm cheeky and I'm flirty and I talk about those things and I enjoy talking about those things if we're in a comfortable environment to do so. I should be able to do that without the sexual harassment and the abuse. But this is the awful thing about how men, they abuse their position of power because as girls, you know, and I'm talking generalizing now, mm. but like as girls, all we want is a handsome prince to come and pay us attention and, and take us away. That's what Disney's taught us. That's what Disney's taught us. Mm. And so my whole life, if a man paid me attention in that way, no matter how young I was, no matter how old he was, it was, it was, I was trying to see that as a positive experience because it was everything I'd ever wanted. A man, a prince to kind of take me away, you know? And so men abuse that. They abuse that position of power. They know they shouldn't be doing that. They know that that girl is vulnerable and probably looking for their Aladdin, 
and they abuse that. That's what happens. Do because um like fundamentally and down to it all, you're like a you're super talented. Thank you do you. your stand up, you do your impressions, you do your acting, you can sing, you do everything. Do you feel sometimes that because of the interest from the press and the stuff that happens, that your actual talent can get overshadowed and some yeah. people forget that you go, know, hang on, I'm a I'm an actor. Mm. I'm a performer. I'm an entertainer. Mm. That's what I do. Yeah. And and some people potentially just see you as a ta- tabloid a, a celebrity. Mm. Mm. Is that tough? It is tough. It is. I, I'm very lucky that I think I, I get given so many amazing opportunities with work. Um, so I'm I'm lucky in that sense that I can kind of prove that wrong. Mm. But yeah, it is tough. You know, I see I see myself in the papers every day, whether it's about my love life. Well, it's always about my love life, actually. Is it every day? Most, I mean, online every, really? every, every hour. It's like, there's a new story. So if you, you know, if you post something or you wear something yeah. or you're seen hugging someone, yes. it's going to go in the hundred percent. The other day really? I, I, I could put up a picture of, um, on my story of a, a new, of, of a boot and it'd be like Emily Atac flaunts um, curvy foot or whatever it is, uh. <laughs> or, you know, or, or Emily Atac wears sexy boots or, you know, it's anything. And I, I've had to, I've, I've cut down on my Instagram a lot because I just can't, the anxiety of like all the stories and uh, it's- uh, we, we really have to work for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have to do that off my face, pissing, <laughs> pissing <laughs> someone in the street. Yeah. 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 Can't put my foot up, no one And they're like, mm, that foot's gonna probably do better than that one. Yeah, yeah, literally. <laughs> away, yeah. Emily, like number one, yeah. number 10. <laughs> but does that, does that, um, because you're, from my experience with you, you're like the most open, warm person. Yeah. But that would, me then, make me become a bit, scared and paranoid and worried that someone could say something or whatever and I don't know what people are talking about. Does that happen to you or do you forget it? Do you know, I I deliberately, I think the reason why I'm so open and I kind of go, yep, yeah, I'm a I'm a bit of a piss head. Um, I date the wrong guys sometimes. I, I just come out and say it all <laughs> so that when when it's printed, people go, oh yeah, well we need she, that anyway. Yeah, she's already told. You, you've yeah. got to just air the laundry uh, before they do. Yeah, just say everything. Yeah. I yeah. love glory holes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I really like them. I just bring it out that noise haven't yet, but I really like them. <laughs> love a love a threesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I love it. I love it just bring it out that. <laughs> but that's it. Yeah, it's a good way to do it. Yeah, because then when it. something happens or, you know, and all my, my PR team and my whole management team are panicking and going, This is gonna come out about you tomorrow. I'm like, no one gives a shit. Man. Wow, it makes you hard skinned like, in lots uh, of yeah, ways. Yeah, like I'm I'm a young woman and I youngish. And you know, I am single and I, yeah, We're I'm enjoying young. my life. Like who cares? Like it's, yeah. No. And I think as well, if you're in the public eye, there's this perception. And I said this in an interview the other day, it's perception that you have to be perfect and have it all together. And mm. there are some people who are squeaky clean or they try and be, you know, and it's like, just, I think to be a role model, you have to sort of, I call myself a roly model. Um, <laughs> You have to kind of <laughs> show your imperfection, show that there's no Absolutely. such thing as perfection because we're striving for this fucking uh, yeah. perfection in the world we live in now with Instagram and all this pretend stuff. And it's like, if you just show that you're a flawed individual and celebrate the flaws and go, Do you know yeah. what, we're not all perfect, we all make mistakes. I think that is a, a healthier uh, person to look up to. I, I don't know if people look up to me, but you know, people say they, they, do. they do. Well, but you know, I get I, they told they do. One hundred percent. So I think it is really important to to kind of show you that I'm very flawed. Yeah, and definitely. that's fine. Definitely. I've always had a bit of a weird thing with like the whole celeb culture like as in celebrity is like yeah. a thing you I couldn't handle the fame could you i was just <laughs> dude tesco's just, just in here for this chicken i don't want to sign you the favorite time ever was men met was drunk and he didn't really know he couldn't get any more wine and he walked in tesco and someone bought him a bottle of wine <laughs> oh, <laughs> you've, you've that's, embellished this story so much I was, that's, that's I, like it was yeah it was i was in tesco's buying a bottle of red wine no, on you a were civilized drunk. evening you were drunk did you all did you already have a biro mouth from the last Cartridge mouth. <laughs> partridge mouth. <laughs> cartridge mouth. It's like the time when I came it's like into his house. Sucking a cartridge. Mitt was like, I broke it up. He broke it up. He said, I broke it up. I was like, that camera. I came into his house. Honestly, looked like he'd eaten her. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it was a complete mess. It's the best was, way to get over <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> just swallow them whole and then there's no issues. Um, but yeah, no, I, th- I think we'd like, cele- mm. like, celebrity culture i think it's kind of it can be quite bad because like mm-hmm. it makes 
normal people who aren't celebrities mm. start to always look at someone else and always like hold their vision towards yeah. this like icon and then and then they stop like actually thinking about their own surroundings yeah. and they're constantly like oh my god why can't I be like and that? when that person like, oh. lets you down and that you know they're cancelled it's this cancel culture as yeah. well which is so toxic and awful yeah. yeah and so you're right if that person is always perceived to be perfect in every way then you're going to look at your own life and the way you are and go, well, fuck, I can't do that. Completely. What's the point? And that's why people get depressed. And exactly. So and life misery. is so fucking hard. And it is hard. It's so hard. Yeah, it really I is. mean, I people will really hate us for saying that. But <laughs> it, it is hard. And it seems, you know, in we're, each, we're sort of not way, like, It's hard for yeah, individual. It's, it, it really it's perspective, is. perspective, really, isn't it? Like, yeah, it is. And it's like, life is so fucking hard. We're, the last thing we need to do is to be striving to be perfect. There is no such thing. Celebrate your flaws. So yeah. it's like preemptive PR. Yeah. So I'm going to put out that now. Okay. I love hard drugs, um, <laughs> orgies, uh, and uh, masturbation. What, what are you? What are you both doing after this? Yeah, 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 I, yeah. <laughs> like call, your, call your guy, Jeff. <laughs> um, I do want to know though. Um, the doc was obviously emotionally draining. It must have mm. been. How are you after it? Though? I've got to be honest. The the week that it kind of the last week that I've had of it coming out. It, it's it's such a mix because it's like I'm so proud and happy to see the impact that it's had and that's amazing but what people have to understand is that for me filming that it wasn't just a job it was like a really personal thing I had mm. to revisit a lot of traumas and you know I and now that it, and having it sort of put out there it's like wow okay I've made that decision now that's mm. that's out there and that is a no very going back now yeah definitely. and it's like and it sparked off this huge conversation again which I'm really proud of but I just have to really kind of just take a take a breath and kind of go okay um you know this is it's 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 really hard it's well, really hard it becomes like fully part of the next step of your journey mm. almost and like yeah all, all eyes on you for for that yeah. moment and you're like shit yeah okay, right this I've got to own this now yeah and and again there are, there are always going to be people out there that go like you know say for example that when I announce the next job I'm doing if it is if it in any way has anything involved to do with like sex or anything like that, people are going to go, oh, you hypocrite. You know, it's like, no, that's no, the point I'm trying to make. It's yeah. like, you know, but as long as I just keep fighting for that freedom. And stay choice. in that lane that you're yeah. in and don't worry mm. about that bullshit on the side. Yeah. You, you know, your, your wonderful sister, Martha's your agent. Yes. That, I think it's insane. Um, you know Martha very I well, love, don't you? Martha, She's the best. Martha, you're a legend. She's a legend. Um, mm -hmm. How is it working with family as well? Do you find that, is it easy, tough? Because I suppose your family are your harshest critics as well. So yeah. at least you get the realness. It's, I wouldn't have it any other way. And yeah. me and Martha have been like that since we were babies. You know, I'm the older sister, but she was the one always pushing me around the pram, you know. But um, yeah, I, I wouldn't have it any other way. I've got my makeup artist who uh, is my cousin. Um, obviously my mum is very much involved with everything. It's It's amazing. It's a lot. And there are, there are very difficult conversations sometimes that have to be had. And I sometimes feel, and I say to them, I sometimes feel a bit suffocated because mm. there is, so, you know, like I sometimes have to say to Martha, right, we're not talking about this as sisters now. We're talking about this in work. She's like, fine. And she has to remove the sister part of her brain. And, you know, but I wouldn't have it any other way. She has my best interests at heart. And it's hard to find agents <laughs> that Brilliant. kind of do that. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, I, I know she's not trying to make a buck or two off me. <laughs> You know, she I mean, she, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. she is. <laughs> yeah, she is making a bottle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's not trying to, but she is. She's to, she she is. is. Yeah, but yeah, it's just like it. I yeah, I wouldn't have it any other. Way. I'm so lucky I get to do that. I mean, it, yeah, it's the dream, and we get to do nice things together and experience all the the highs of the industry. Because you know, we spend a lot of time talking about the lo the lows of the industry and how hard it is, but. The highs are so fucking high. Yeah. They are so high. So we wouldn't be doing this. It's, it's a, it's a bi dream. dream. And mm. we would not be doing this unless we got off on those. Mm. <laughs> it's like, that that's all right. Validation. Oh. Of it. Yeah, I love it. And it's like, you know, you don't know, oh, could we lose it all tomorrow? Maybe. That's it's, exactly. It's like spinning a roulette wheel. Yeah, exactly. And we're, we're gambling people and that's, that's what we do. And to do that, to be able to experience all that with your sister and have, you know, these highs and, and then when it's low, you've got her by your side. When it's high, you've got her by your side. It's who do, did you want? Do you have do you have any regrets at all? I know that's a simple question. No. Like that. You'd have no regrets. No. I don't yeah, I don't believe in the word regret. Good. I really don't. And I mean, unless you're a fucking paedophile or a murderer. <laughs> yeah, don't, yeah, yeah. Don't, you know, don't do that. Don't do that. But like <laughs> uh, in terms of what I've done, no. Because even if I've made choices in the past that maybe weren't the right ones at the time, they led me to where I am now. You know, it's like, 
I've learned from everything. I've been very fortunate with all the things that I've, and, e- and even, you know, whether it's talking about work or my personal life, I don't, I've done some fucking shit things in my personal life, but like I've done them. There's reasons why I've done them or I've, and I've learned from them mm. or, you know, and people sort of say, do you not learn from your mistakes? And I kind of go, yeah, well, yeah, but I'll just move on and make new ones. Mm. You know, it's like, that's, that's life. I don't believe in regret. And what do you think you know now? That I regret having two coffees this morning. <laughs> yeah, that, that's yeah all. pints of anxiety. Like, straight, yeah, straight in there. I love doing that. Yeah. It's really on the edge. <laughs> <laughs> nice what, and anxious. What it's do exciting. you think? What do you think you um you know now that you didn't know ten years ago? Oh, that. Oh, trying to think of really witty, intelligent. Yeah, stuff. yeah. I knew that the clouds do, would yeah. do pause. And <laughs> Come back do, I, do I know? Do you know, I've just learned that I can survive a lot and I'm tougher than I make out. I, I, I've learned that you can be a very emotional person that does wear your heart on your sleeve, but that doesn't mean that you're weak. Mm. I think that actually that gives me my, that's my thing. That gives me my edge and it gives me my strength, I think. Mm. Um, I think people sort of misplace love for weakness and actually loves the most powerful thing in the world. If you, you know, um, even if it gets obliterated to pieces, it will piece back together. It does. And, and it's, it's harder. It, it gets better. It's it like, gets, it like does. a Terminator. Yeah, it is like a Terminator. <laughs> Listen, yeah. um, I want to say huge congrats. Uh, you, you're, you're such a buddy of mine. And yeah. whenever you're doing stuff, I'm just so, I just get psyched that you're killing it. Um, Me too. Your show, the Emily Atac show, or whatever you the documentary, whatever it is, all the stuff you're doing, and I'm sure you've got loads more in the future. So I just want to say a big thank you for doing this. I know you're busy out of control, and thank you for coming on Pro. Thanks, guys. Love you both. Love you, dude. Appreciate it. I'll see everyone back next week. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Oh, bye. Oh.